Fun Rascal here. And Mama, welcome to our channel, Pause Animation. Today we're covering the second Fast and Furious movie. Literally tall, too fast, too furious. Super lever. <laughs> this movie was one of the earlier films that was attempting to expand the world of Fast and Furious without Dominic Toretto. Not a good decision. Mm -hmm. Now with this one showing Brian O'Connor on another undercover mission for the LAPD, in order to redeem himself to the force. Mm -hmm. And before we start, be sure to like, subscribe, and click the on some future podcasts and World of Pause videos. Yes. Now, I want to say it's not we didn't like this movie. We just think that with all the characters, it works better. Right. Just so you know. So this one originally was released in the U.S. June 6th of 2003 and was directed by John Singleton. Mm hmm Screen written this time by Derek Haas and Michael Brandt. So, again, there's another director for this one. Mm -hmm. In this movie, Brian O'Connor and Roman Pierce, played by Tyrese Gibson, mm -hmm. team up to go undercover for the U.S. Customs Service to bring down the drug lord Carter Veroni in exchange for the erasure of their criminal records. Right. This is the only film in the main series without Vin Diesel as Dominic Toretto. Right. And it seemed like they were trying to have, like we said, something going beyond what was the first movie, especially when it gets to the third movie where even Brian is not in it whatsoever. But it turns out that the films are better with Toretto in it. Not, like, not that you don't like them, but it seems like that's the better route to go to. And luckily, they didn't just get stubborn and say, no, nah, we're not doing that. <laughs> now, for those of you not familiar, this is based on the magazine article in Vibe, titled Race and Race by Ken Lee. Mm -hmm. is the franchise is based on. And again, this is the second movie. So this particular movie had a budget of seventy-six million, so a little over double of what the first one was, which was thirty-five million, and it grossed at the box office two hundred and thirty-six million over. Oh my gosh! Right. Million. So them putting more money into it was smart because it paid off immensely. Right. A game produced and distributed by Universal Pictures. Right, and it's pretty much one of their biggest franchise to date now outside of some animated projects. And for this one, it had a whole different feel to it. Mm -hmm. And I think you can say that for pretty much each film in the franchise is supposed to do something new, even if they reuse a certain villain archetype in there. Each film is different from the other. And this one definitely was different from the first one. It had really more of a... Um, like the terms they use from from marvel the street level vibe to it they kind of had it in the first one but this one's more focused on having to be a police-esque type movie with some uh, racing in it and it had that miami vice feel or mm. vibe if you've ever seen the reruns or watched the series it really had that vibe which you know works because the uh dealer was Miami based, so I right. guess that was on purpose. Right. Now for this particular movie, the stars this time are Paul Walker, Tyrese Gibson, Ava Mendez, Cole Hauser, Chris Ludacris Bridges, and James Remar. We're just gonna call Ludacris oh, wow. instead of uh, just the whole name. And the cast actually worked. Again, you got introduced to some new characters you weren't familiar with. A couple of them return in subsequent movies. Mm -hmm. But it worked. It absolutely worked. And the action, I think for this one, the action scenes, the special effects, the things that were happening, as well as the cars, are what made it work because it was a special video made the 10 best cars in Too Fast, Too Furious. You're going to be seeing some of those come up now. But that is what made this work, just sticking to what they knew and focusing on what brings people joy about it yes and while well, we say while well, it is different from the other film they still found a story to tell that was still exciting to see it didn't feel like they were doing so much talking and talking and talking that there wasn't enough of the racing and action nor was it the other way around we're having so much action and racing very little story they just want you to get to those scenes they still were putting effort into a story and mixing in the street racing within it and we know that as the series goes on, it does go a little bit from racing to sort of 
grand heist espionage type film somehow evolved to that, but it's still fun to see it be this type of movie in the beginning. Definitely. Now, with this one, you had the returns, of course, of Paul Walker, the producer, Neil Moritz, Ben Diesel, and we'll tell you how, Rob Cohen, the co-star and director, respectively, I uh, wasn't able to return. You had Gibson and Singleton who joined the cast in their absence and both returned later on and became regular part of the cast. Yes. And to account for Dominic's absence, there was a short film titled The Turbocharged Prelude with Too Fast, Too Oh Girls, yeah, we did see that. Which was produced and released by principal photography for it. And it was fun. The way they had it, it just fit right in. And that was actually brilliant to have a little short film tie-in. And others began to copy it as well. Yes. And you can see with this film onwards that they kept experimenting well and trying different things. And with something that didn't work in the movie, you didn't see it in the next movie. But right now... As, as you watch these films in order, you can see what will later be the inspiration for future films or foreshadowing within the stories, all the actor selections, just about everyone they've cast, whether as the protagonist, side characters, background, antagonist, whatever, all of them really seem to mesh well together and fit their role. If they're antagonists, they serve their purpose very well and they have a reason to be after the hero and the way they wrote all the main characters like you said they're always a family and it's like you're just seeing the family grow each movie even if they're not all together yet you're seeing few of them come up every film now for this movie again critical response was not high but who gives a crap because the fans loved it right and it showed by the money they put out at the box office and this movie had the 15th largest U.S. gross of 2003 and the 16th largest worldwide. So they got their comeuppance and it, again, it just shows if you have a vision and you know it can work, you stick with it and you keep going forward and moving because it works. Now, this particular movie has been described about being all about racing. Yeah. And it was. It absolutely was. was. Every time they got a chance, they raced. It's like, all right, we get it. (laughs) One of the funniest scenes and most amazing scenes is when they drove a car onto a boat. Yes. (laughs) And it looks seamless. And you know how many times they had to practice that? (laughs) So I want to read a quote from John Singleton. And this quote was made in 2014, long after the movie. He said that the movie was awesome. The heads of the studio at the time were just like, just make it fun, make it cool, make it this gen. I didn't do all the techno music for that they did in the first movie. I used nothing but southern hip hop, which was like the rage at the time. I just funked it up. I made it more diff- multi-ethnic, and it kind of followed the paradigm that I set up. What we're going to do here is Paul is character. God bless his soul. Paul Walker is going to be edgy. He's going to be more like a bad boy. Oh, that no. was the film where he was the star. That was the movie where he was the star of the picture because we didn't have Ben Diesel. It was a real fun experience. Yeah. And I think this sums up exactly what you get for his movie. Yeah. And now as you read that, it actually says that back then where Universal and just you know told people who were making these movies, have fun, go nuts, do what you think is best. And back when the studios let the directors and creators create what they wanted. Back when and, they listened. Right, back <laughs> when they listened. And they said, all right, you know what you're doing. Just make it good and we'll put it out there. And you can see with all these films, it has paid off tremendously. As you can see, not every person has bad ideas or something that needs to be changed over and over and over again and simplified down. Because the story in itself is, looks like it's simple. But there's still enough things going on where they're not trying to make it super complicated, super complex, make it too many side plots, too many things going on, too much action, too much of this. They didn't put in too much of everything. They just really kept it to be a well, simple plot, but enough going on in there where you're invested and feel like they're just doing it by the numbers and you're bored. And the cars. 
And the cars, yep. And this is one of the two movies that's John Singleton's legacy. The first is Boys in the Hood, which I haven't seen yet. And Too Fast, Too Furious. As you know, he passed away, unfortunately, in April of 2019. Mm -hmm. He became, at age 24, the first African-American and youngest person to be nominated for an Academy Award for Best Director. Mm -hmm. So that was just a setup for him moving forward again mm -hmm. and taking that experience and building on it and having his dreams moving forward again this franchise is really an inspiration for anyone that can open their eyes and see mm -hmm. because so many of these people that were in here had dreams i mean the entire cast mm -hmm. and the staff and directors and everyone and they kept moving forward regardless of the criticism and bad reviews they were getting right and again they are the winners here yes it's movies become a, one through nine, they're the winners. Yeah. And they prove that perseverance and sticking with your dream and having that family vibe yes. will bring success. Yes. And as you go forward with each movie from this point on, you'll see how the franchise changes. A lot of times for the better and sometimes for the not so better. And it starts to really accumulate when it gets to number 10 because 10 actually starts calling 10 and 9 actually start calling back to this movie and the third film and start going back really almost to the beginning of the franchise and in a way it's fantastic and even bringing characters from this movie and the next into there so you know they didn't forget about them or retcon them and i think when we i do review at some point about 10 you're gonna see the result of when you take out the family element of this. It is a core part of this franchise, and clearly, if you take it out, it becomes a whole different film entirely. And I'm really grateful we have this movie, especially what happened with Paul Walker. This is an extra one you got to have of him. They're possibly couldn't have been or wouldn't have been made if they listened to critics. Right. And as Singleton said, he got to showcase his talent and show he truly was star quality. He mm -hmm. truly had the talent, the personality that you love to see off camera and on camera. He was really a genuinely good guy. A yes. nice guy. And it came through in his portrayal of this character. And it was like a Hawkeye. Definitely. So, this is a great movie, and if you haven't seen it, you're missing out. Too fast, too furious, too clever at the time this was written. Right. Is a movie you should watch. Now, if you have seen it already, let us know what you think in the comments. If you haven't, again, it's available everywhere to stream and watch to buy. You should watch this franchise. It is one of the most exciting and entertaining and fascinating and visually stunning you ever see. Now, I want to mention in this one, you're not going to get that vibe like you got in the first one. You don't have the street races and all that. As we explained, this is like a, a cop buddy show yeah. type vibe, Miami vibe, right. where you're taking down the bad guy. And if you like that type of genre and that type of entertainment, this movie is definitely for you. Yes. And if you haven't already subscribed for updates and weekly videos for anime series, anime shows, and all things animation. Absolutely. And thank you so much for subscribing, for joining us each podcast, and for supporting us. We appreciate you so much. Feel free to share this podcast. It helps out our channel a lot. And remember, always, you are a space. Right. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Rask Entertainment. And I'm Mom Entertainment. Have a tuntastic day. Peace.